This week on the podcast, Carrie and I are talking all about what it's like to cruise with Disney Cruise Line during a pandemic and what was it like to return to Canada from the United States at the end of my epic four-week adventure? Stay tuned to find out. You're listening to the Pixie Dust Fan Podcast. Hi, I'm Francine. And I'm Carrie. We're two best friends who can't stop talking, usually about Disney stuff. Sometimes we have fascinating guests, and sometimes it's just us. But it's always positive and fun. We're happy to have you join our chat. Thanks for listening, and let's get started. Honey, I'm home! Welcome back, buddy! <laughs> I've missed you! You're home! <laughs> I'm home! Even though it's a, it's a video chat. Uh, I'm home in my house, talking to you in your house. Yes, Feels- it's... It's got a different back. It's it's your regular backdrop, not your your resort backdrop. <laughs> Feels like old times. Yes, it does. And I'm sure everybody's noticing that the audio probably sounds a lot better this week. You're back in your studio. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm not like using my. Seriously, now when I'm going away, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to figure out something for recording while I'm there because that was that was not fun. I'm and sure was, there's like a travel podcast microphone or something you can get off of Amazon. I'm sure there is because honestly, that was so uncomfortable to hold the the earphones and and try to hold them straight. And I really didn't do a good job of it anyway. So, yeah. So, but so we're back to we're back. normal. We're back. Yes. I'm home. So it's bittersweet. You're so it's not home sweet home. It, well, it's home sweet. Hey, my plants lived both of them. They, I mean, they were looking a little wilted, let's be honest. They don't look all we're spry. Thirsty. They're a little thirsty. So I watered them up last night and hopefully they uh, they just rejuvenate. But it's they good lived. They don't have any pets. <laughs> and they lived. Yay. Fluffy and Sparky were still good when I got home. They were still kicking. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, I, there's a reason I have no pets. <laughs> but yes, okay. it's... Yeah, it's good. To, it is good to be home. It's good to be home. Sort so, of. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about you going on your cruise. Yes. The, yeah, the fi- the final week of my of my trip was a Disney cruise. Like as if three weeks at Walt Disney World wasn't enough. A month at Walt Disney World wasn't enough. Let's just throw on a cruise. May as well. It's like the icing on the cake. <laughs> and you didn't cruise alone. You had a, you had a travel companion. I did. I did. So just before, um, I guess it was just into week three, near the end of week three, uh, Anna, our friend Anna came down to join me at at Saratoga Springs. And that was the week I was still working. uh, But she arrived, I think, on the Thursday anyway. So I took the Friday off. um, And this is Anna who's been on the podcast and she's our park warrior friend. Well, it's funny you should say that. <laughs> Just so because, people know who Anne is. Yeah, so I'll link to it in, to the episode in the show notes. But we did a podcast with Anne I called, like, Doing the Parks with a Park Warrior. And, you know, I just want to, I just want to tell everybody, it's not an exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> so Anna arrived on the Thursday and I took the Friday off and thought, okay, we'll do, because our cruise was on the Monday. So I thought, okay, well, we'll do a couple of park days together and hang out. And um, I was exhausted. Like, by Sunday, I was exhausted. Anna goes, like, all day. Like, and, and when I say all day, I don't, I mean, like, there's no stopping and sitting. I, it, yeah. I, I was exhausted. You were pooped. Uh, I was pooped. It was fun, though, to have her there and get to experience it with her because she's missed it, you know, so she was going through basically what I went through the first week, and she was just so excited to be there, and it it was fun to do that with her, for sure, and and experience it with her. Uh, So we stayed at Saratoga, um, did some time at Disney Springs, did the parks, and then uh, we had one night at Disney's Grand Floridian before the cruise. Uh, so we moved over, I guess on the Sunday, um, on the Sunday and Anna was going to the parks and I volunteered, uh, to transfer our luggage, 
Uh, <laughs> I said to her, look, I've done, you know, I've done all the parks. I'm good. Uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, I will transfer the luggage for us and get our room and get us all sorted. And uh, you can you can meet me later. So that was my way of taking it easy while Anna hit the parks. I got a little rest. I was watching her that day. She went to Animal Kingdom. And she, like, went on. Because she'll, like, post a picture of, like, the ride or the attraction sign. And, and like, kind of check in. And she, I think, did everything at Animal Kingdom that was open. Uh, she was everywhere, right? And that park is huge. Yes. I, like, I'm not even kidding you. Like, I met her that night at Epcot. And she was still, because she messaged and said, okay, I'm leaving Animal Kingdom. I'm going to Epcot. And I'm thinking, okay, I'll meet you there. Because I'm thinking by this time, she's got to be tired. She's not going to be walking far. Yeah, no. <laughs> she was still go, go, go. Yeah. Wow. Man. So you stayed yeah. back. So I stayed back uh, and got us all sorted. Got our room and I I wanted to do some laundry before the ship, right? So that I had certain things. Um, and it's funny because when we were packing up at Saratoga Springs, uh, I think I posted that I bought this brand new mug at Coronado Springs for my tea. So I wasn't drinking out of the plastic mugs for my tea. And uh, when, when we were packing up to move, I, I rolled it up in like my dirty clothes and, and put it in with my laundry. And I said to Anna, don't let me forget that I put this mug in with my clothes. And she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? She wasn't going to be with me at the Grand Floridian. So what happened? <laughs> so my beautiful new Dumbo mug. I got to the Grand Floridian, got our room, found out where the laundry room was. No big deal. Took my laundry bag down. And it's not a DVC one, which meant I had to pay for the laundry. So I paid opened up the washer, took my bag of laundry, put it inside the wash, and then just pulled out the bag, right? So you know you know how you do that? So then all yeah. So anyway, <laughs> shut the door, pushed the button, and within like about four or five seconds, I heard this clatter, and I realized I left my mug in the clothes. <laughs> and now my mug was inside this washing machine, which, by the way, if you're not sure... Once you pay for the washing machine and you push the button to the cycle you want, there's no going back. <laughs> How is that possible? I kid you not, Carrie. The cycle was, I believe, 35 minutes. Come on. No, no, no. You don't understand. You don't understand. So this you was couldn't the smallest open the door. laundry room. No, this, this was the smallest laundry room in history. So everything echoed in the in the room and there was no opening the door. Like I I I jumped on this thing, I pushed every button on the machine. At one point I tried to pull the machine out from the wall to unplug it. <laughs> <laughs> and all I kept thinking is somebody's gonna hear this and think that I, I like I'm gonna break the washing machine. It's gonna cost me a thousand dollars. I'm gonna have to pay Disney a thousand dollars for this one. It's probably like an industrial one. Then I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it's five thousand dollars. <laughs> and I can hear with every change in the cycle. It's hitting the window on the inside of it. And I'm thinking it's going to smash. It's going to be a flood. I'll have flooded the Grand Floridian. It was the longest 35 minutes. <laughs> so I'm messaging you. I don't know what I thought you could do. I'm looking up the washing machine company on my phone. I'm praying <laughs> nobody opens the washing room, the laundry room door and comes in and says, what did you put in the washing machine? Because how do I explain that I've put a mug in my laundry. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's the, th the longest 35 minutes of my life. I, I can't get the washing machine out to unplug it. I can't get it to stop. I'm messaging you. I message Anna and I'm like, to, I don't know why I'm going to give her in trouble for not reminding me when she wasn't there. And she's not paying attention. I even sent her a video of the noises coming out of the washing machine. And she's just like, Okay, well, have fun, buddy. And then she <laughs> replies and says, so she's obviously not reading my messages. She says, you should tell somebody that that washing machine is broken because it doesn't sound good. 
<laughs> the longest 35 minutes of my life. So now I've resigned myself to the fact that my, my mug is smashed. It's a million pieces. And I need to be careful when I'm taking my laundry out of the, out of the washing machine because the shards of glass and, and all that stuff are going to cut my hands. And all the pants that I really in shorts that I was desperate to get washed for the cruise are probably all shredded from all of the, the broken mug pieces. So the cycle ends and I'm prepared and I open the door and I pull out my clothes. Like I pull out some of the clothes and there's nothing. I can't see anything. I'm like, what's going on? Oh my gosh. Now it's Did it eat your mug. mug? It eats, it's <laughs> eaten my mug. And then I look in the back of the machine and there is my mug in one oh, piece. All shiny and clean. <laughs> totally clean. <laughs> Not a tea stain in sight. Seriously, Carrie, it was all... So if you're ever wondering how sturdy the mugs are that they sell at Walt Disney World, let me tell you, they're, they're good. They're washing machine proof. <laughs> <laughs> this mug looks fantastic. You would never have known that it went through a 35-minute cycle in the washing, in an industrial washing machine. Wow. Yep. So that's how my laundry day went. <laughs> the day before the cruise oh my goodness yeah but i so the it made it home and uh now you know it's one of my favorite mugs because it comes with such a great story of of my panicked 35 minutes yeah it's a story of resilience that's for sure oh for sure absolutely so that was sunday monday oh. we were going on the cruise so before we went to the cruise, we actually had to do a whole bunch of stuff online uh, from the Safe Passage app. So it's through Disney Cruise Line and you get a link and you have to go to Safe Passage and fill out all of this stuff, submitting your vaccine status, like if you're vaccinated or not, how long you've been in the States, if you don't live in the States, um, and you submit your ID, all sorts of information and when you submit it, then it gets approved. So you'll get it, you'll get um, on the dashboard. And I have screenshots of this, so I'm going to do a blog that, that has it all in it. But it basically comes back and says you're safe to, you're, you're cleared for, to come to the port. You're cleared for sailing. But there's still like a whole bunch of stuff you have to do when you get to the port. So it's such a different experience, Carrie. Like, when you arrive at the port, you know how you used to go into the terminal and you go up to the counter and check in? No, 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 no. You go, there are tents in the parking lot. So uh, across the street from the terminal, they have all these tents set up and you go in there for um, testing. And you go through all of the steps. So because I had been, it's weird, I'm fully vaccinated and because I had been in the States for so long, I hadn't internationally traveled recently. So I didn't need to get tested. Oh, you're exempt. I was exempt from getting on the ship, <laughs> of getting, getting tested before getting on the ship. Anna, on the other hand, because she had arrived a few days earlier, she had been traveling internationally, which meant she had to get tested. So uh, basically, they kept us together. She went and got tested and I just waited at the end of the, the line for it. And then they bring you out of there and put you in another tent. And in this tent is where you sit and wait for your results. And your results will come up on your app. Um, and you know what? It was, for the most part, it was pretty, it was pretty smooth. Like they just, you know, it was amazing to see how quickly it all kind of went through. So we, we sat in this tent, there was a little TV and they had all the chairs socially distant from everybody. Um, and then you just keep checking the app. And the app, the Safe Passage app, will update when you're cleared to go. And then that was it. So once you were through there, did you went finally went into the terminal as per usual? Yeah. So then you just go in the terminal and there's nobody in the terminal. It was very, it was weird. It was very weird. And... Your arrival time, so they're really staggering the arrival times, and they just won't let you in if you're early. Like, so for people who normally, you know, used to get, say, boarding time one o'clock and people would show up at 11, you just, you can't get in. 
they they won't even let you in the tents so once you're cleared then you go into the terminal you walk through and you can you can walk on board everything again is socially distant um or physically distant is what they call it and when we got up they they announced us on the ship which was fun and then you know how they kind of announce you and then you just go in and wander that's not how it works now you walk into the main foyer and a cast member, they announce you and a cast member directs you to like a little dot. Well, it's not a, it's a big dot. It's not a little, it's not a little <laughs> dot. <laughs> it's a big enough dot for a family of Mickey ears on the floor. And basically they fill those dots with families. So you're told, here's your dot, stand on it. And then Mickey and Minnie come out to welcome you to the ship. So it's Aww. almost like, a, you know, like instead of a sail away or whatever, they come out, they do this little welcome. We're happy you're here. Uh, and you stand on your dot. After they're done their welcome, a cast member coming comes to get you to tell you where to go to do your uh, muster. Oh, okay. So remember when you cruise, I got to tell you, the one thing that drives me absolutely crazy about cruising is the muster drill. And I think everybody feels that way. Like, don't yeah. you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not fun. So depending on where your mustard drill is, you can be standing out in the sun on the deck for half an hour waiting for people to come line up just to show that you know where your station is if there's an emergency. Now, and I really hope they keep this, <laughs> the cast member comes and says, okay, go do your muster thing. And they tell you where to go, like where your station is. And you go and there's an there's a cast member waiting at your muster station and basically you you go there and take a picture of the app. You tell the cast member, you enter the information that, yes, you've done your your drill and that's it. Hmm. You're done. That's cool. I think I think a lot of the cruise lines have have made like a like muster drill 2.0, like virtual muster drill. I think that's kind of the like maybe it's because of oh, um, COVID, but I bet you anything if you it, when this is all done said and done, if that sticks around and they survey regular cruisers, what they're going to say the best <laughs> thing about COVID was was that they that that the muster drills became uh, virtual because I think that's what they're doing. They're making them so that like you 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 go to your stateroom, you see like you need to know where you're supposed to go to your stateroom and and get your and I don't know that they do this anymore, but what you used to have to do originally. Is you would go to your stateroom, get your um, your life. life your life preserver thingies, and you'd put them on, and then everybody would go down to the muster drill, to your station, and then wait and get checked in and do all that stuff. So I think now it's more like you know you know you know where your stuff is in your cabin, and then and then somebody from your cabin has to go and and do the check in. I think, and it's the same thing. Like you go to one spot and you scan your app, and you're yeah. and you're good to go. It's crazy. And I'll tell you, the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app is so fantastic now. It nice. Like, they've updated it all. It's so interactive. Like, if you want to chat with a cast member, instead of... Remember, we used to go to that guest services line, and on a cruise, it could be crazy. There's an onboard chat. You nice. could just chat with them instead of going and getting in line. In fact, to get in line, you have to have an appointment now to go up you just chat with them online it's so fantastic like i can't even tell you how great that is hmm. so the, even the, the appointment thing makes so much sense like it's yeah. you know forget about you know what we're going through right now but just generally some of these enhancements make so oh, much I sense i hope they keep them all like there's so many i really hope they keep and that mustard everybody that asked us about what's the process i'm like oh keep that muster keep it <laughs> like that must stay like you think everybody on the ship had to go to their station within that mm -hmm. twenty minute window or fifteen minute window. So everybody, everybody feeling anxious, everybody squished in, everybody all in these various spaces. It wasn't wasn't a good thing. No, it really wasn't. So that that was definitely a bonus. There were a lot of things on the cruise that were a little bit different, um, and you know sometimes better. That I'm really kind of hoping they keep. So, like, I think I told you at the park, sometimes I was feeling uncomfortable that, you know, the guests and maybe the protocols weren't always there with the guests. Let me tell you on the ship, there's just no room for error. Like, they are all over that stuff. And, like, they will not take your, your picture with your camera. They won't handle any of that. 
it the cert like they really they removed stuff from the dining rooms to make room for more ta- like to space the tables remember when you used to sit down in the dining room and sometime you'd be like i feel like i'm gonna back into this person behind yeah. me." yeah no 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 there's lots of room hmm. tons of room and uh for the show like they but they limit the capacity in things so for shows they they limit the capacity. You can't go into the to the theater until your whole party is there, and then they seat you, and it, they seat you every other row, and they leave three seats between you and the party next to you. So everybody in there is physically distanced as well. Um, at Castaway Key, the same thing. All they ask you not to move the the sun loungers and stuff because they're all physically distanced, and um. That was so on our day that we went to Castaway Key on our first day we went to because it was a double double dip two days at Castaway Key the private island uh the first day when we got there there were no sun loungers left on the adult only beach which you know I love Serenity Bay I love to hang out there however we ended up going to the family beach and if any of you saw my social media posts, I got burnt there just like I would on the adult <laughs> beach. <laughs> In fact, I still have a small blister on my forehead. Oh, dear. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, I fried. Uh, and the family beach was great. We, we had a great time. It was so quiet. Like, Carrie, there were only 1,500 people on our cruise. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot less. Yeah, it's like 25% capacity really in the grand scheme of things there were it was like the ship was so quiet which was really nice it it was kind of a nice time to sail Mm -hmm. yeah very cool you know the fireworks they do at sea they had them on two nights so they separated them based on your dining rotation so or your dining time so early seating had it one night and then late seating had it another night and they had dots up on the top for you as well to go stand on. That one they didn't seem to enforce quite as well. But, I mean, I think for the most part, the the passengers were all used to those kind of things that everybody kind of stood on a dot. <laughs> um, but generally yeah. aboard, like, so, so yeah, there was dots and lines and, and spacing for seating, for dining, even for queues and whatever. Everything was sort of how we have had it here forever, right? Like every, yes. everything was physically distanced and, and they stuck mm-hmm. with the rules. So they you did, had, you did it. Everybody even the, did it. Even the stores, like they had lines to get in the store. I mean, there weren't really many times that there was a line to get in the store, but they, they stopped it when the store was full or with so many people, they stopped it. You had to wait for someone to leave to, to come in the store. Um, on the tram at Castaway Key, it was every other row on the tram that they seated you. Yeah, it's it's just they really, really stayed on top of it. Even in the theater when the show was over, they asked you to wait so that not everybody crowded on the seats, that you, you sort of followed the airplane rule where, you know, the people with the, the highest seats get out first and you wait for each line. It It was, yeah, it was amazing. Hmm. It was really amazing. And the kids thing, they really limited uh, the, the kids in the kids club. So they had our windows for that you booked for your kids to go in. So that would probably be a bit of a challenge for some people who their kids spend a ton of time in the kids club. Because what they were telling us is that their their program is like an hour long program. So if you were in it for you could stay for two hours, they could make you two appointments, but you'd basically be doing the same thing. Right. So it's more like a scheduled. Yeah, it's a program. It's not just dropping in. And I guess it was a program before there was things that they knew were happening at each hour. But right. You kinda, when you when you go in, you're there to spend your hour, do whatever they have <laughs> planned. And then, yeah, you're out. And then you're out. See you later. And they kind of kept them into um, what they because that way they kept them in kind of a, like a little bubble. So where the kids were, so say there were 10 or 15 kids in this bubble for the hour, then they knew if something came up or somebody was sick or somebody was showing symptoms, they knew who the 15 kids were that were in their bubble that they'd had sort of close contact with. So that was Mm. like Disney totally was all over this. I felt extremely safe on the cruise. Very much so. Was there a lot of children on board? 
Uh, you know what? I think there were more children than I than I really expected. Uh, given that the kids can't get vaccinated at that age, I don't know that I was expecting so many, but there were, and they, Carrie, they were having a fantastic time. They, like, the excitement on their faces, it was just, it was so great. And the character interactions, so it's still physically distanced character interactions, so they were kind of popping up uh, in different places, and they had sort of picture time, like they always did. But let me tell you, those lines went faster. Because they can't, they can't really do anything to interact except take your picture and you wave and, and whatever. The lines went so quickly. Yeah, efficient. Very efficient. <laughs> it feels like a lot of this COVID stuff that they've put in place has become so much more efficient. That's cool. Yeah. And, you know, I was talking to the, the stateroom hostess and, and she was lovely and she, um, she said like it, it was nice that there's less people on the ship because it's less work obviously uh but the problem is that then they they're getting less tips right right so you know for anybody that's cruising you, you know you should maybe consider topping up their tip a little bit these guys they work so hard and it's unfortunate that they're sailing right now with with limited capacity that it's it will impact their tips for sure yeah for sure like they would have if there's that many yeah fewer because they get gratuities based on the people on board exactly gratuities, so yeah so how was the how was um how was the dining in in our favorite area the adult the adult area because that's usually what we do we just go on to eat <laughs> and chat yeah. and relax and hang out a lot of time in the adult area how was that so it's yeah, it's funny you say that. So the adult area, it was it was different. So they were doing wine tastings, beer tastings, whiskey, ta you know, all of those tasting things that they do. Unfortunately, a lot of them were in Pink and uh, Skyline, which is my favorite place, uh, my favorite bar on the ship. So Skyline was closed because they were doing those like the programming so they there. did the tastings in there and then when the tastings weren't going on the bar was closed mm. so i did not get to go in and have a drink at skyline i did however uh go into Evo anna loves evolution uh which is the the bar where they usually do um the like dance they, club it's the, the disco dance, it's the disco but there was no dancing so dancing, oh. <laughs> there's no dancing right now <laughs> during COVID. So they did... Uh, it's a dance-less disco. Well, they had karaoke. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, you know what? So when they do the karaoke, this was so fun. Like, these are the little things that you notice. So on the tram on Castaway Key, when everybody got off the tram, the driver went around and, like, wiped down all the poles that everybody touched to hold to get off the tram. At karaoke, between every singer... The guy wiped down the microphone and replaced, you know, the little doohickey that's on the end of the microphone, like the little black um, cover, like the spit guard or whatever. <laughs> the spit guard? The spit guard. Spit guard. <laughs> <laughs> he replaced it. Well, so there was good. a new one in between. So everyone and if and if you were not in your seat in the bar actively drinking or eating, you had to have a face covering on, which meant these guys sang karaoke with their face coverings on. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, so they had their face covering on and he changed the microphone. Um, and there was no one around them. But uh, so there was karaoke. They did match your mate a uh, couple of nights. And that's, that's cool. always that's always a fun one. Did they have entertainment like people like, you know, how they have the like the 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 entertainers in like the small venues or like the, in the little nooks? Did yeah. They have any of that? Or there was there was a I think he was a violin player one and that and maybe a piano player but there wasn't as many as as normal that but was, it was definitely there. yeah there was a little there was a little um six eight seven pubs the the pub uh, had trivia going on we nice. missed a lot of that because we were on late seating late dining and a lot of that was going on at the same time. But uh, the adult areas, we did Satellite Falls, which is the, the sort of, what would you even call that? It's like a big circular, like almost like an adult wading pool. Yeah. Where, where there's like a, a little, yeah, like, it's, it's like, like a, a little fountain that you sit in. Yeah. Just to cool off. It's a off. wading pool. Yeah. It's a, it's a wading pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So I, I never actually got in the adult pool, but I was in the waiting pool, the adult waiting pool. And uh, we did co the cove. We went and um, the ladies had coffee because we ended up, we met friends on board uh, that, you know, well, friends that we knew before we got on board, I mean. And uh, yeah, we went and had coffee and tea at the cove and it was, it was fantastic. And you relaxed a little bit in your, on your balcony? I did. So I enjoyed the balcony, which was, you know what, Carrie, I just, if you're going to cruise, veranda's the way to go. It so is. Like you can go out and, and chill and, and watch the water. Um, yeah, it definitely, definitely makes a difference. Leaving the boat was the same as usual, except that everything staggered. So even at Castaway Key, it, when you wanted to get off the ship, you know, when they say, okay, you can debark now. Yep. Yeah, no. You needed got, to be in a queue. You, you need an appointment. It's like a virtual rise of the resistance. <laughs> you virtual on the app, queue. you check in, say, I want to get off the ship. And then they tell you when you can come. And I guess that's a lot like on a, on a cruise where you're just really cruising to nowhere, cruising to paradise where, you know, <laughs> like what, what, why not? Like to be in a virtual queue or have to wait a little bit or, or follow oh, yeah. more processes to do this or that, like you're pretty much on an all-inclusive cruise for you're not going you're not going anywhere you're not leaving the resort exactly really, going on castaway <laughs> key is is you know you're still at disney you're still on it's still the cruise yes. line so yeah and they definitely so get that queue though we didn't get off first thing in the morning but the first day that we were getting off we clicked the button to get in the queue and five minutes later they're like okay you can leave so that so it was well. not like you had to oh snap we gotta sit here for another no, hour no no it really wasn't long and they use you know and it was um you would have been so they didn't have your fruit the way they do on castaway key carry they're not you a know, buffet big, of fruit as far no, as the eye can see <laughs> that big buffet of fruit no uh and even on the ship the the buffets they were they were buffets in the traditional sense except you didn't serve yourself so you walked up, there were big glass partitions, and then the cast members on the other side, you would point, you would say, okay, I'd like some of this. They would put it on your plate and then walk along with you and spoon whatever you asked for on your plate and then hand you your plate at the end. That's pretty cool. Along with any condiments you needed or mm -hmm. whatever. Like there weren't packets of ketchup or you, like none of that. You, you asked a cast member for it. Even, you know, the, the pop machines on the ship, you didn't get your own pop. There was a cast member there. You asked them for it. They put it down on a table and you picked it up. Hmm. Yeah. It was, pre it was pretty neat to see how they did that. Yeah. And I guess with so few people on board, it, it would, it would probably be very seamless and smooth. Like why, like, you know, to have to take those extra steps. Yes. And it kept everybody safe. And then cool. getting off the ship was just like. So you didn't have to do any testing to get off the ship you guys had to do testing to go home but getting off right. the ship was just getting off the ship yeah so getting off the ship was just pretty pretty normal for your dining it seemed like they were spacing people out a little bit so um you know the late dinner some people had eight o'clock some people had eight fifteen. so they separated us a little bit like that so there wasn't a mad rush at the dining and uh getting off the ship same thing so we had an eight fifteen breakfast and then we walked off right after that. And I got to tell you, Carrie, I've never seen it like that. You know how you put your luggage out the night before and then it shows up in the luggage terminal? Yeah. We walked into the luggage terminal. There were like five people in there. Yeah, that's, that would be weird. I almost fell over. Like going into an empty terminal arriving and then getting like walking into yeah. that area and not seeing like a sea of you know, people in suitcases and chaos. <laughs> yeah. and not chaos like it's bad, but it's like, well, what do you expect? Like thousands and thousands and thousands of people are getting <laughs> off a ship. It was, it was so bizarre. It was so weird to get off and, and there was nobody there. And of course, I think I told, well, if you follow me online, you know, I broke one of my suitcases. So I have two suitcases with me and one of them, one of the wheels was broken before I left, but I didn't have time to repack and, and use another suitcase. Well, I broke another wheel on it Whoa. While I was at, I guess, at the Grand Floridian because it was broken by the time I got on the ship. So now two wheels are like, like broken, broken, broken. 
So I had to drag that thing on its side out of the, mm. the cruise terminal. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. But maybe that's just that's just karma of you making making fun of my my squeaky for all the you know. <laughs> I think it perhaps might be. <laughs> perhaps it might be a little bit of karma. It might be karma for that. I think you could be right. My, Let me my, tell you. I my my lonely, it. my lonely little, my lonely little uh, carry on squeakies in my closet right now, going, <laughs> <laughs> making fun of me. Oh, watch yeah. now! My karma's going to be my squeaky's going to b- <laughs> bite the bullet the first time I travel. <laughs> squeaky's <laughs> wheels going to fall off. <laughs> squeaky's going to bust, blow all wheels. <laughs> yep, that's what's going to happen. Oh. Anyways. Yeah, so we were flying home the next day after we got off the cruise. Bing, bang, boom. Been here, done that. Been here long enough. I got to go home. Yeah, pretty much. Sadly. Uh, But the whole testing thing, like the whole testing thing to come back to Canada is what the issue was for us. Because like getting off the cruise on the Friday and then flying home on the Saturday, we didn't really have a lot of time. And so we decided to to rent a car from from the port. And that was kind of interesting. So I, you know, you know me, we'll just take a cab, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm not taking the shuttle. So I said to Anna, don't worry, there'll be cabs. We can just get a cab outside. We walk up to this man standing outside with a big sign that says Port Canaveral taxis. And we said, can we get a taxi? And he said, I don't have any. (laughs) (laughs) And I said, what do you mean you don't have any? And he says, well, I have one. But that family's taking it, and I don't think you'll fit with them. I'm like, what do you mean with them? <laughs> and Anna's like, why you got a sign that says you have, you're the taxi guy? You got no cabs. You can go home now. Your day is done. Oh he my says, goodness. I don't have any cabs available. Anyway, so we had to get a lift to take us to the Alamo uh, rent-a-car, which was like literally five minutes away. Um, we got the car. And we went to the airport. So Anna and I had booked our tests at Orlando Airport because our friends who had been down earlier had used the same thing. So they went to the airport. They said it was super easy. No problem. Go there. So we drove from the port to the airport. And uh, let me tell you how hard it is. I've never had to find parking at Orlando International Airport. It's not easy, like, to find a spot. We barely made it there just in time for our appointments. Um, it was kind of stressful, Carrie. Yeah, it seems like it probably seems like a good idea because it's the airport. And you think, well, the airport's the airport, like, you know. Right? It's, you know, everything should be tickety-boo, like, you know. It's, it's busy, people are in there, you know, whatever yeah but like even like you said getting like everyone gets stressed out just maneuvering around any airport you know going in and out of the terminal trying to figure out where you turn where you go in for parking where you return your car rental if you're returning your car rental like just driving to the airport and getting even when you go there lots of times to the orlando airport if you do it all the time it's still kind of stressful it is and the fact that you're going there to get a test to determine whether or not you're allowed to go home (laughs) adds on like perhaps another level of stress it did. It totally did. And then when you get there and there's a line. So it, we were not flying the same day as our test. And all I kept thinking was originally I had said, oh, this is great. Like if they do it at the airport and you get your test results in 30 minutes, then we could just arrive at the airport an hour early before our flight, like an hour earlier than we normally would. And boom, 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 we're done. All I kept thinking when I was standing in that line is if I was flying today, I'd be having like severe anxiety unless I had left like an extra three hours so we were the, we were in the line for people who had appointments and then they had another line for people who did not have appointments and the poor girl that was trying to wrangle everybody was like at the end of her tether and people were yelling at her because they had flights to catch and they didn't have their results and other people were yelling at her because they didn't have walk up appoint like you couldn't walk up she was like nope we only have enough tests for the people we have appointments for. So if you were trying to get a walk up, which meant you were at the airport because you had a flight, 
-hmm. So people were losing their marbles because they had flights to catch and they couldn't get their tests. Then other people had booked the wrong appointment and had asked for an antigen test instead of a PCR test. And they didn't have enough PCR tests if you didn't have an appointment for a PCR test. Oh my goodness. Like people were flipping out. We had the appointment. We had everything filled out. Like for us, it did go quite smoothly, but the energy of the people around us, it it was, yeah. So they kind of did it like, it was almost like an assembly line. Like, so they, they gave, say, 12 of us paperwork to fill out and we were all in line. So you filled that out. Then they took you in one at a time to pay. So it was $175 US. And then you had to wait in this like little holding area. And then they took all 12 of us and they, so they just said, you know, Francine, seat one, Anna, seat two, Mark, seat three. And then they put us in this room with these chairs that were all labeled. And then you sat in your numbered seat. And then the nurse just went boom, 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 boom through all 12 people. And then you got kicked out. So you had to go out and sit in the the airport and wait for your results. Mm -hmm. They don't email them nothing. It's paper. So they come out and yell your name and then you just go grab your results. It was weird. (laughs) So in the end, it took, it was probably, uh, we, we got there at 1055 and there was like maybe 15 people ahead of us for the appointment. And then we were done our paperwork, um, by 1120. And that, so I actually wrote down the times And then we were going into the room at 11.30. Our swabs were done at 20 to 12. And we got our appointment, our results at 12.30. So we arrived at 5 to 11 and we were done at 12.30. So in the grand scheme of things, not so bad. No, not really. Right? Like an hour and a half, we were done. But I'll tell you, like the anxiety of all of that. Plus you're waiting to find out whether or not you have covid and can get home, you know, it just, yeah. So it was a bit anxious, um, but it, but at the crux of it, it worked well. Yeah. <laughs> so it did work. And then, yeah, so Anna and I were both negative. Woohoo. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, the next day we showed up at the airport and they did ask, oh, you have to do your arrive can, you know, that, that app. The Canadian app. Oh my goodness. So you got to fill out this app. You got to upload like your vaccine status, the dates of your vaccines, which thankfully I had in my, in my thing. Then you had to, you know, attest that you had the, the paperwork that you had a negative test, blah, 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 all that stuff. And then at the counter, when I checked in, they put a little sticker thingy on my passport that said I was vaccinated and the poor oh Carrie, there was an older couple next to me checking in at West Jet, and they got the wrong test. They didn't get the PCR test. Uh oh. Yeah. So they told them they had to go and take their luggage. And this poor man, and he just kept saying, "So where am I supposed to go?" So they told them to go to the testing site at the airport. But I don't know if they were accepting walk-ups that day or not. So they didn't get on their flight. Oh dear. Um, but I mean, for me, I kind of, that part, it was sailed through on the plane. They give you nice disinfectant wipes to wipe down your seat when you get on the plane. And, uh, when we got home, it was of course not fun either. Our customs was so backed up that they made us sit on the plane for a while until they started releasing us off the plane 50 people at a time so that we didn't, so that we didn't flood the customs Mm -hmm. area. And then um, I used my Nexus, thank goodness, Um, but it was still a long wait. And then I got randomly selected because I was the lucky winner of an additional COVID test at the airport. Oh my goodness. Well, they say that's what they're doing, right? That they're doing, that they're going to, they'll randomly select vaccinated people. Yes. So I was randomly selected. So I had to go through that. And you know, what was such a shame, like it, make no mistake. I was tired. I, I was, you know, it was crowded. I was not happy to be there, but I was still kind. Like 
in those little places, the little rooms where they had for you to get swabbed, they had signs that said, like, please don't curse at our staff. It's not their fault that, like, oh, I, I just, yeah. I felt like it's ridiculous that they need to have that, right? Like, why can't people be kind? I'm, I mean, none of us were happy to be there, but whatever. You got to do what you got to do and be nice. So, yeah, so I got my swab and then I got my taxi home. And now I'm in sort of a little self-quarantine, even though I don't have to quarantine. I just, for a few days, I just want to make sure I feel okay. Even though I've now been tested more times in the last, like, four weeks than I have been in the last 18 months. But for when you're, so safe. for your Arrive Can app, you had to, uh, yeah, like you have to have all of your information uploaded, but you have, you have to have, um, like you have to put your quarantine plans or whatever in case, right? So you just... Yes. So for yes. you, you just said, I live... Like, I, I have I my plan alone. is I live alone. I'm going to quarantine at home and whatever. So you just had to, like, check all the boxes... Yes. ...that the app required you to, to yeah. do. Yep. And then the the um, random testing that I got done at the airport, you have to create an account with some website, and then they're going to email me the results. When they get but just those. one test. You don't have to do a test later. You just did the one at the airport. I just did the do... one at the airport. They and didn't that... send you home with a kit or anything. <laughs> no kit. And uh, and it was free. Like, I didn't have to pay anything for it. I guess the government's picking up that tab. But I'll tell you, Carrie, that airport was rammed. It was jam-packed. And yeah, I've heard. All I kept thinking was, well, can you imagine if I managed to do four weeks in Florida and stay COVID free and I catch something at this airport <laughs> <laughs> because it's so crowded. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's like in generally certain times of the day before all of this, our customs area, like we come down and out, like I'm no terminal one a lot better than terminal three, but like, you know, you come down the elevator into the customs rooms and sure there's the, we have Nexus. So usually the Nexus lane you're in and you're, 10 seconds usually to get through yes. nexus like three or four minutes at the most but the room of like the general non-nexus population is sometimes it's just an entire like gymnasium sized room full of people <laughs> in a queue yes. like yeah. that's how it is sometimes before all of this depending on the time of day that you landed right how many flights were so yeah, yeah. i can like imagine the... what it would oh. be like yep now holding people on the plane just so that they didn't yeah. over like and they so That's after not, i've my never flight, experienced that before i've had them hold the plane because the lines before all of this there when there was always short like staffing shortage at customs like i've had my flight delayed because they're waiting for people to get through customs never right. <laughs> have we waited on a plane when we landed so people so that we yeah. wouldn't and they every would just window was in yeah. Every booth was open. Every like it, w and the Nexus line was long. I, like I've never seen it like that. Yeah, it yeah, was crazy. And they Anna came, Anna's flight was delayed, and hers came in a few a couple hours after mine. And they did the same thing. They were they held them on the plane. Wow. Yeah. Oh, now there yeah. was another friend that we had down there at the same time. Uh, she flew home on the same flight as me, and she used uh, Fast Test Now which was closer to universal and what I, and I think I might try that one in October because I think, uh, it was great. She didn't have to wait for her results. So she just went in, got it done, swabbed, left, and then they emailed the results. And I think that one was $199. Hmm. So, so she still have to travel some travel a distance, but it yeah, wouldn't be very long. Right. Yeah. Less so stressful she just by did the it. sounds of it. <laughs> exactly exactly and she said it was it was easy so i think maybe in october i'll, I'll try that one and see how that goes i think the yeah. key is like for you know if the if the test doesn't cost like close to 200 dollars, it's not the right test <laughs> exactly <laughs> if the test is free or yeah well it doesn't cost very much You've heard all these people, and I've seen people online saying, you know, go to Walgreens. You can register with the U.S. address for the hotel, and it's free. And But it's not guaranteed that you get the test results in a certain amount of time. Like, that just makes me so nervous. Yeah, you want to make sure your plans are, are fairly solid. <laughs> yeah. 99.9%. I, mean, I, I guess you could technically uh, go 
and do that one and if it doesn't come back then rush to the airport and get like the other yeah. one i don't know but you're on vacation generally yeah like you don't want all this added i mean it's already stressful enough with all the stuff you've got to do and like i'm putting together a couple of blogs on how it went for me but i gotta remind everyone you have to do your own research too it, it's this is what worked for me as of today and tomorrow it could all change yeah that's true too right like it, it, the, yeah a testing says something could, it could close or relocate or the type of test could change mm -hmm. that's available there so yeah i think you need to really make sure what you need is is lined up and is is right and scheduled why and, doesn't disney just put one on site wouldn't that would, be fantastic that would make it a lot easier like, if they just picked a site near one of the resorts or something and just said here we've got the tests so you could come here we'll email them you know what it yeah it would be fantastic yeah. that like, would not be to so be for, like even not yeah like not even free like you, the same situation yeah i'm fine to pay, pay for, for it <laughs> but just somewhere where you don't have to leave the property would probably be yeah good. but yeah I don't know. maybe there's some kind of insurance thing or something that they can't offer i don't know who knows but they're great partners with like advent Healthcare, and that's who's doing it at the airport so yeah. Anyway, I made it home. Ta da! Um, yeah, and it's it was it was twenty seven days of of bliss. <laughs> <laughs> and I would recommend to anybody that if you feel comfortable traveling, you should. Hmm. If you're not comfortable, then you got to, like then wait. But I think if if you're thinking about Disney, Disney's doing the right stuff. It's in the parks they're a little more lax right now um than they were before but you know if you've got your face ma your face covering on you follow the rules you're vaccinated you know and you go with the right expectations that's been sort of my my mantra on the cruise it's yeah right now it's a great time to cruise <laughs> <laughs> it's really a great time to cruise while nobody's on the ships yeah cool now it's time to start the countdown to the next trip Not even. Wait. <laughs> well now i feel like it, it's like you can't unring the bell now that <laughs> right now that i know i can get that yes there's stress yes there's additional cost of testing blah 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 however i can get there so now that so the bell's been rung <laughs> it's time to to resume and we'll resume our as regularly it, scheduled, scheduled programming program. <laughs> that's it you knew where i was going with that yeah <laughs> yeah so countdown to 50th celebration in october yeah it's just around the bend the it'll be bend. it'll just be yep it'll be well october 1st is it'll be here before we know it only so many more there's countdowns. Disney's doing the countdown. So every day on social media, you get reminded that it's almost October 1st. <laughs> but we're not going for the first. No, we decide. On. It's great. You know what? I think, I don't think I'd want to be there when it's that crowded. Like, I think the first, the first week is going to be crazy. I think it's going busy. to be busy in October and November. I think so. I think it'll I think be busy, so. quite busy for the next few months. Because a lot of people were are waiting for it, I would think, right? There's mm -hmm. people that have postponed their trip, and they, I'm sure they they've rebooked waiting uh, to go for the anniversary. So yeah, yeah, agreed. And oh, the last thing we should mention about the cruise is uh, the sailing that I was on was the last cruise uh, that you that they allowed non vaccinated travelers. Right. So the Bahamas came out. The Bahamas have um, instituted something where you cannot get off the ship in the Bahamas or you can't sail into you the Bahamas with, uh, yeah. with, unvaccinated. with unvaccinated passengers. Yeah, so it definitely something to check with your travel agent to make sure you have the updated uh, yeah, rules and regulations. And then for testing and all of that stuff, yes, your travel agent can help give you some advice. But it's so important you do your own research because it changes all the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's the traveler's responsibility to make sure they know what's required. Absolutely. Yeah. Carrie, I've missed you. <laughs> <laughs>
Did you miss my howling cat outside the door? That's, I, that's, I know. That's been I hear howling for the last couple minutes. <laughs> 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 Well, the next trip is going to be a lot of fun because I won't be missing you because you're going to be with me. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> Taking pictures of you. Oh my gosh. my! I kept thinking about you while I was there. I'm trying to take all these selfies and I'm thinking, where's my photographer? Carrie. So for everyone listening, Carrie is a fantastic photographer. So when you see, like I have these pictures when I'm on vacation with her it's because she literally makes me stand and pose in certain places. Like she'll yell at me and be like, go stand over there. Turn this way. Move your head this way. Like she, she totally does. I'll get uh, nice and close and you'll be like, that's too close. I'm like, wait, do you see the outcome? <laughs> but the pictures always turn out so fantastic. So I'm looking forward to that. And maybe we can record a podcast or two while we're there. And the sound should be fun because we'll be in the same room. We'll both be. Yes. Yeah. We'll but I will look for a mic. We'll look for a, <laughs> I'll a look tran- for a Travel mic. A travel mic, for sure. All right, Carrie, we've talked everybody's ear off. It's been... Yes, we did. You we, did. It, you did all the talk, and I was just like, uh-huh, I know. Like, uh-huh, uh-huh, cool. Yeah, I yeah. know. Ooh, why? Awesome, why don't you cool, interrupt fun. me? <laughs> <laughs> I can talk. What, what is it people well, say? You're the you one that had all the chipmunk. updates. I know. But <laughs> what did you say? What? You could talk I could to ta- a I could talk to a chipmunk if it, it's, it's still long enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good grief. All right, Carrie, what is your pixie dust this week? Well, this week I uh, went on a little, I went on a couple little adventures. Oh, well, uh, look what you get I, up to while I, I'm away. I know I, well, cause I didn't, I, you know, you weren't around. So your sister and I had to, had to uh, visit the Disney store because our Disney stores are closing. <gasps> You went so to the Disney store without went, me. We went to the Disney store without you and we did it because we thought, you know, if we didn't, we would always wonder. <laughs> <laughs> we'd have the what ifs and was it worth it and uh well we won't have those what ifs anymore <laughs> we're glad we went but anyways we went to the disney store uh we did buy things of course we're not gonna not buy of anything course. we found right my new emo has a new outfit that i got for 20 or 25 percent off whatever oh the goodness. discount is um we what went... kind of outfit did you buy for him Oh, I bought him a, like, a, it's like a workout outfit. You know, it's, it's a little casual. It's casual. So anyway, so we went to the Disney store. We spent a little bit of money. We got to say farewell to the Disney store. Uh, and then I went back to Becky's house and we had dinner and we, and we chatted and we hung out. So that was awesome. It's a fun nice. little adventure. Because it's been so- busy at work and I haven't really been doing too much, but like working and and sweating because it's hot here although it's not hot anymore you came home and the heat went away um so I, I really needed i really needed a night i needed a night out to to just have a little bit of fun i got to meet uh your um your uh nephews oh, <laughs> your doggy ne- terrors your di- your 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 doggy nephews the holy terrors <laughs> and uh and it was a really nice it was a really nice night out just what i needed so that's my pixie dust Oh, that's nice. Yeah. What was your pixie dust? We've gone away for a month and came home. And <laughs> Well, it's funny because I was like, oh, is it good to be home? I don't know. But I, I really think that my, my pixie dust was probably my negative COVID test. <laughs> I got, <laughs> if I'm honest, you know, I did everything I was supposed to you do. You mean the, the surprise one? Your, your, the, your bo- no, no, no. Your bonus no, test. Not my bonus test. <laughs> the, the, one at, the one at the airport oh, okay. coming back negative. Uh, because I think I did everything I was supposed to do but Carrie I gotta tell you there's always this thing in the back of your head that says what if I picked it up what if I you know even though I'm vaccinated it was more about am I not going to be able to get home and I'm going to have to come up with the alternate plans and and things like that so I will say that when I got that result it was it was a big relief for sure and I think it's, it's probably almost impossible to not worry about that yeah it's like, and it, it was you know and I knew I'd be okay I knew I'd find a place to stay like all of that I had I I wasn't worried but it's still it's yeah. just like a what if right so it felt really good when she handed me that piece of paper and it said negative and I was like woohoo uh, yeah because really by the time you had the bonus test <laughs> by the time I had the bonus test I was already You're in already Toronto I was like, already in Toronto I was like what ifs. whatever whatever I'll do it again and yeah yeah so that was. That was fun. Yeah. And now I'm back and we're back to our regularly scheduled programming. 
and uh, we have some we have some good stuff coming up. We did have so I did have some email issues while I was away. Uh-huh. Uh, something happened to where the website I had to reset some passwords and I accidentally reset the email passwords. So I didn't actually notice that I wasn't getting my emails. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought everybody was leaving me alone. Uh, so we did have some additional questions for our Ask Us Anything episode that we were mm-hmm. planning. Uh, I cool. found them when I finally got logged in. So thank you guys for sending them in. Continue to send some. Uh, and we're going to get that episode scheduled in the near future as well to answer your questions. So Cool. Thank you That's for that. cool. Yeah. I'm glad you got your emails back. Oh, my goodness. I was like, what is going on? And it's you're ghosting them. And it's weird when you're working on your laptop, when you're used to working on like the big screen monitor. It, so that was a bit, yeah. Anyway, it's all sorted now. So thank you all for your, for your questions and stuff. And we'll, we'll get that episode scheduled shortly. Cool. All right, Carrie. And quick reminder to everyone, reviews and ratings go a long way on Apple Podcasts. So if you could leave us one, that would be fantastic. And uh, yeah, reach out to us with any ideas you've got and questions you have, and we will we'll get it scheduled. Carrie's nodding her head at me. This is an audio podcast. <laughs> what, oh. why, why not? I'm just saying, you know, I'm good. Like, yep, good job. Don't forget, follow us on Instagram. Wrap it up. Wrap her up. <laughs> and we'll see you real soon. Thanks for listening to the Pixie Dust Fan Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you're following us on your favorite podcast player so you'll get a new episode every week. And find us on social media too. We'd love to hear from you. Till next time, remember, you are never too old to be young. Chase your dreams and design your own happily ever after.